Good evening. I'm Jason Harper, Superintendent of the Rochelle Schools. Tonight I'd like to communicate a little bit more detail about a recommendation that was made to the Rochelle District 231 Elementary School Board and it pertains to attendance centers versus neighborhood schools. And this recommendation would potentially impact our schools, our elementary schools specifically, for next year. I know it's a challenging time right now. Uh, the pandemic has, has challenged us on all fronts, home and at work, and school is no different. So I'd like to first start off by saying thank you to everybody who's made this year a success. I know it hasn't been easy and there's been a lot of changes. I don't come to the public and to the board tonight to create more stress or more changes for next year. But uh, in addition to the pandemic, uh, the district has been facing an ongoing issue with declining enrollments. And as we project forward to next year, we have the same problem. Because of this, May School is only going to be half full next year. Um, based on that information, I recommended tonight that the, the district, District 231, move from a neighborhood school model to attendance centers. I believe there's many short-term and long-term benefits to this that we'll get into here in a second. But before that, I want to make sure I explain exactly what attendance centers mean. As you know, District 231 in Rochelle has long used a neighborhood school model. This means that all the students in a certain boundary or certain area in town go to the same neighborhood school. What I'm proposing for next year is we move from the four neighborhood school model to a three attendance center model. And as you can see behind me, this means that Lincoln School would be home to our preschool, kindergarten, and first grade students. That means all those grade level students from the entire district. Secondly, Central School would be home to all of our second and third grade students while Tilton School would be home to all of our fourth and fifth grade students. May School would not have any students in attendance next year. We feel there are many benefits to this process, uh, short and long term, but some of the long term benefits we feel very strongly about are increased educational outcomes for students, more time for collaboration for teachers, uh, more equitable distribution of our funds and resources to all students in the district, and improved financial savings for the district and the taxpayer. As I mentioned earlier, we believe that there's a unique short-term benefit during COVID. Right now, the district is using a model in which parents have the ability to opt into in-person learning or opt out to remote learning. Because of this and our neighborhood school approach, each one of our grade level teachers for kindergarten through fifth grade are trying to simultaneously serve our in-person learners as well as those remote learners from that classroom. If we move to attendance centers with all of the students from a certain grade level being in the same building, that would allow the district to dedicate one grade level teacher to all of our remote learners. With our remote learners learning needs taken care of by that one teacher, that would allow the rest of our teachers to go back to our typical day. And so no longer would we need to end the day around 1230, we could go back to a full day process. And in the short term, we believe getting back to a full day school uh, for both our remote learners and for our in-person learners, it's got to be priority number one for next year. As with any recommendation and decision for the schools, there's also a financial component. This decision is, of course, no different. Right now, conservatively, for next year, we anticipate saving $200,000. The year after next, and every year that follows, we anticipate saving $300,000 for the district. Simply put, a move to attendance centers allows us to save money in the short term and avoid the potential for tax raises or uh, staff cuts and the large class sizes that might come with it in the future. It would be wrong of me to uh, gloss over the shortcomings of this plan and the challenges that come along with uh, the approval of the recommendation to move from neighborhood schools to attendance centers. First and foremost, if I'm a parent on the other end of this video, I would be concerned about how am I going to get all of my uh, children to their specific school for drop-off and pickup, um, you know, at 8 o'clock in the morning and 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, that challenge we hope to mitigate by uh, continuing to use the transportation shuttle system that we've had in place for the last several years. Right now only 50% of our students actually attend their neighborhood school. So that's caused us to create a shuttle process from building to building in the morning and in the afternoon. We've had to double down on this strategy this year because during the pandemic, we've only been allowed to have 50 students on a bus at a time. This strategy and this approach has allowed us to shuttle kids around in the morning and in the afternoon, while allowing the schools themselves to serve as transportation hubs. 
we feel that this model would allow parents to use the schools as drop-off and pick-up areas to help minimize the number of schools they're going to. Um, additionally, we know that uh, there could be some stress and anxiety that comes with transitioning from building to building more frequently. Right now in the neighborhood model, one of the benefits is that students and their parents can get more comfortable with a building from kindergarten all the way to fifth grade. What I'm proposing here tonight is that we would increase the number of transition between schools to happening roughly every two years. We would work hard and we welcome suggestions and innovative approaches to making this transition process better from building to building. There's some other challenges listed behind me, but we feel like um, we can handle those transitions and those, those challenges going into next year. So now it's important to get your feedback on this recommendation. Um, the first and easiest way to provide some feedback is to email or call, and my contact information is behind me. Uh, secondly, we are going to have some parent meetings, an English language parent meeting and a Spanish language parent meeting, and those will take place on Thursday, February 11th. The English language meeting will be at 5 p.m. and the Spanish language meeting at 7 p.m. Both of those meetings will take place at Lincoln School. Beyond that, in March, the board will hear reactions from the public and we will share what we've heard in these various uh, feedback loops. And then in April, the board will make a decision. To help you digest this recommendation and, and get a better idea of exactly what's being proposed, I've provided this video and two other resources on our website and on Facebook. The first is simply the presentation slides that uh, were part of the presentation that was given to the board tonight. And the other option is for you to watch a longer video that's in much more detail, and it's those slides with a voiceover from me. Thank you for taking some time to watch this video tonight, and we look forward to your feedback.